This topic is fiber-based model for simulating strength and stiffness deterioration of high-strength steel beam. We'll begin by modeling the beam's geometry and apicus, followed by assigning cyclic loading. Next, we will discuss incorporating initial imperfection residual stresses into our model. And this is very crucial for achieving more accurate and realistic simulation results. Finally, we will cover the implementation of ductility damage model, which is an advanced topic that will help us to simulate how steel beams behave under extreme loading condition and capturing the onsets of damage and failure. This course is designed to equip you with the skills needed to perform a sophisticated simulation using Abacus, ultimately aiding in the design and analysis of high-strength steel structures, and I look forward to working with you and exploring these topics together. So, so uh, in order to make a fiber-based model for simulating high-strength steel, I needed to first build a 3D continuum model using Apicus, um, calibrate that based on experimental tests, and then build the fiber-based model using other software like OpenSeas. And the figure here you're sh that I'm showing here in my paper, uh, it shows most of the details of the model that I was working on. It shows a cantilever beam that consists of eye sections with elastic response portion and inelastic response portion and also the constraints, the distribution of residual stresses and the assignments of uh, initial imperfection. In the paper I'm also showing the stress strain curve of the material that I was dealing with and here you can see the distribution or the pattern of residual stress that I adopted for this research. It shows the equations, how I calculated every number that I used in, in my paper. Here's a description of the models that I use for calibration. It depends on your skills on how fast you can build the, the cross-section. You can use whatever you want. Here I'm going to use um, different techniques for building the model. So I started by clicking on anywhere on the screen and then I can use the XY coordinates to specify, for example, the web. Starting by the web, this is 0, 150. And then for the flange, again, again I can click on the XY coordinate one more time. It's going to be 0, 150, and then the second coordinate will be 75 and 150 on the Y coordinate, okay? So this is one of the way to start building your model. Sometimes I just draw any lines and then I go to dimension right here. So you click on it and then it gives you the length and then you can change that as you wish. If you go back to the paper, you will see that the flange width is 9 millimeters, while the web is 6 millimeters. Now, we can do something called copy. So I can copy any line right here. And we also have a matter option. So you can just click again, copy. This is the center line of the web, so I need to draw the thickness of the web. So I, I'm just going to move three millimeters to the left, three millimeters to the right. This is going to be three, yeah, zero, and then it will be minus three, comma, zero. Okay, so here we have the web. So instead of drawing the second part of the flange in the same way, we can just make a mirror. For a mirror, first you have to define the mirror line, and then you will select the entity to mirror. You click done, and here you go. We can do the same thing for the second part now. 
it asks you about the depth. It means the length of the eye section. If you go back to the paper, it's going to be 1,310 millimeters. So this is what you're going to use here. And then click OK, and here you go. You can save your model, of course. Now, let's go part by part. Now, from property, we can assign the material properties. The most important thing when you're dealing with Apicus is to recognize that Apicus doesn't use any units, so you have to make your system of units, and it has to be consistent. So here we're dealing with Newton millimeter everywhere, and we will keep using these values anywhere else. So we have assigned the density of the steel, and now we are assigning the elastic properties, Young modulus and the Poisson's ratio, engineering stress-strain curve, which is the one that results from the coupon tests. You need to convert that to true stress-strain curve. If you go to the paper, you can see the you can check the equation that you used to convert from engineering stress-strain curve to true stress-strain curve. Of course, this curve is only valid to the bread points, which represent the necking points, after which you need to um, include the material damage model, which we're going to discuss later on. Now you need to assign the section. After that, you press results. If you want to see the distribution, this is the final distribution. You can go back to the first step and then starting analysis by moving from one step to other. So here we go to zero, and then this is the first analysis, this is the second iteration, third, blah, blah, blah. Now, if you wish, you can make an animation that shows you how the model is moving. You can just click on animate time history. That tells you that the model is working as we are expecting. And here are some damage, some portion of the flange, the web as well. it will stop at 75. Okay, now, what if you wish to compare your hysteresis loop with what you have from the tests? In order to do that, you have to go back to steps, and now operate on XY data, again, combine, but this time I will select the displacement first, representing the what's going to be in the x-axis, and then I will pick the movement and then on plot and here we go. This one shows the hysteresis loop for movement versus displacement or top tip point displacements of the model and this is what we're going to copy and use for comparison purposes. So this is the basic model for the high string steel beams. As I said before we had to include the effect of residual stresses, the effect of initial imperfection, and to assign the ductility damage model for the material, which will be the subjects of our next meeting. All right. So we can start from our basic model, the one that we have used before. And we're just going to copy that model. Copy model, we can call it buckling analysis or buckling, whatever you wish. Analysis or PA. Buckling analysis. All right. Now, 
We need to modify a few things from that model. Let's start by modifying the validated conditions or the steps. We don't need the cyclic loading anymore, so we're just going to delete it. And then we are going to steps. Previously, we've used a static general. We don't need that anymore. We're going to use the buckling analysis, so we're going to create. Okay, we're done. Now, let's take a look at the initial imperfection we got. We are going to results. And here we go. So this is the first eigenmood, and as you can see, the whole member is moving. And this is what we're going to pick. This is what simulate out of plumpness or out of straightness in steel member. And usually the deviation or the difference between these, the start point and the end point shouldn't be more than the length of the member divided by 1000 or in some standards divided by 500. This is accepted in the code. So this is what usually cause initial imperfection globally. If you want a local initial, initial imperfection, we're just going to move to a higher mood. So the second mood is also global. So as you can see, the third one is local. It takes place at the top flange and, and the web. Now this is the fourth one. And as we keep going, we're ge we keep getting higher and higher ones. So for our problem, we're just going to pick the first one and the third and the fourth and we're going to assign their amplitude in the file now since we've run the file we need to store the output file somewhere in our directory and in order to do that we're moving again right click to the file edit keywords okay now we need to type something now let me show it to you can go down down to the output field and then you press enter and then type the following star note space file comma global equal no and then comma this is very sensitive to what we're doing so we might get some errors but let's try mode equal one and then space last mode equal three. So in this line, we're just telling what are the th what are the motions that we are interested in. Mode equal one, last mode is equal three. We can set it to four, for example. And then we can say, okay, we would like to have the displacement. So for that, we type u. Now, press OK, and then let's run the model again. That's good. See, this is the file we're looking for. It's called ea.fel. This is what we're looking for. Now, we can go now to the original file. Is model one, and then I can say, okay, edit keywords. And what I'm going to do is to type the following just before the step. So we can go down to step, yep, 
right here and then just before step we can start two stars in perfection come and then file and then equal now the name of the file buckling analysis and then comma step equal one and after that we start specifying the mode we are interested in for example i'm interested in mode number one and the amplitude of it, it could be like 10 millimeters or so. It depends on the units you're using. And maybe we need like the third with 2 millimeter, 3 millimeters, and the fifth or the fourth with 3 millimeters. And that's all what we need to assign initial imperfection. But for this case, I will use 100 just to make it visible for you. And then you press OK. And then we can run the model. From here. OK. Now. For residual stresses, you can go back to the paper. There are different models for assigning residual stresses, and these stresses are basically coming from the, uh, the, the fabrication itself, or it comes sometimes from fabrication. If we're dealing with welding, then it will uh, induce some residual stresses to the section, and sometimes from the process of making the hot fault section, it can keep some residual stresses as tensile stresses and compression stresses within the section. These residual stresses are not very significant for the case of beams, but it might affect the behavior of um, uh, column members. But first step, if you take a look at the first step, you can see two colors. These two colors represent the residual stresses that you have assigned, because we've assigned these stresses as an initial condition. It means that there, these stresses are exist before applying any tap floating. So the one in red, you can see it's 300, 300 intention, while the one in the blue is, uh, I think we've assigned that also intention. This is not correct. It has to be in compression because they have to equalize each other. Now, once you start applying the load, you will see, you'll notice that these stresses are changes. And instead of keep pressing, you can just click on animation, animate time history, and you can see how the system is moving. This is, the action will take place near the fixed end. You also know that. Uh, let's just focus on that area. Now, before continue the analysis, there is important thing that I need, that I forgot to mention. Before running the analysis, you need to go back to Mesh. And in Mesh, you are going to use the Assign Element Type. And you pick everything in the screen, Done. And in that screen, it helps you to use the finite element model you want to deal with. So, for example, you need to know what are the elements library. Is it standard or explicit? Let's go back to our simulation and let's see what's going on at the fixed end. 